let's go back to the word of the Lord. Uh, I'll preach for a few minutes. I'll not take long. Uh, then we'll come back and Dr. Laura will continue in the next session. And you can believe me that we'll be building on each other's message uh, because the Lord is saying the same thing, though through different methods. Let's go again to Luke chapter 5. Uh, we read towards the end and then I'll pick up from where I, I ended yesterday. Let's read from verse 33. It's good to keep reading. Uh, hearing it once you have spoken, twice I have heard, the Bible says. And they said unto him, why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but they, thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and they shall fast in those days. And he spake also a parable. This is a parable, and a parable is something that, you know, you have to interpret. Uh, no man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. Let's read in New King James. Just give me New King James. If otherwise, then both new. Give me the New King James. Let me read the New King James. All right. Then he spoke to them a parable. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And also, the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskin will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Why? Because God is interested not just in the wine, but also in the wineskin. He wants to preserve both, and they are important to him. And the Bible says in this version, Luke is the only one who brings this uh, last portion of the scripture. He says, and no one, having drunk old wine, immediately desires new, for he says... The old is better. Yesterday, we brought out four things uh, regarding the theme, uh, new wineskins for new wine. We say there are four things. The writer here summarizes them. There is the old wine. There is the new wine. There is the old wineskin. And there is the new wineskin. The old wine, the new wine, the old wineskin, and the new wine skin. Now, in this scripture, towards the end, and you can buy the CD, I don't want to repeat what I said yesterday. From this scripture, you see that Jesus brings out two, two things uh, uh, from the book of Luke chapter five, the portion we have read. He brings out two things, that there are two issues. And as Dr. Laura has said, you know, God is not uh, scarce. God, there, there is no scarcity of new wine with God. In fact, when you read the Bible, God is ever promising new wine. In fact, throughout, he will give us new wine. You know, you can read, for example, Joel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Let me read it, and then we'll come back there. And I'll show you the two issues. Joel chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible says, The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall be no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day, this is prophetic, that the mountains shall drip with new wine, the mountains shall drip with new wine, the hills shall flow with milk, and the brooks of Judah shall be flooded with water. A fountain shall flow from the house of the Lord and water the valley of Acacia. And right there you get the answer what the mountain is. When you go to Isaiah chapter 2, let's go to Isaiah chapter 2. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 2, the word that came... Uh, to, to Isaiah, the son of Amos, so concerning Judah and concerning Jerusalem. It shall now come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house, 
shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. That is a promise God is promising us in these last days. That's why it's a better wine. All nations shall flow into the house of the Lord. And the Bible says in verse 3, verse 3, many people shall come and say, come, let us go up where? To the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For where? Out of Zion. We have come to Mount Zion. Out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So when the Bible says the mountain shall drip with the new wine, the Bible is referring to the new word of God that has to come to the church in this present time. The Bible talks about the present truth. The present truth. You see, Jesus said, now going back to that uh, verse, chapter 5, of Luke, he said, new wine must be in new wine skin. And he says, the problem is that when people have tasted the old wine, they don't quickly desire the new wine. So we see two things. There are people who want to put new wine into old bottles, and there are people who completely do not desire the new wine do not desire the new wine. In other words, they do not thirst and hunger for the new wine. They don't thirst. Because, you know, the currency of the kingdom of God is called thirst. Amen? The currency of the kingdom of God is called thirst. Isaiah chapter 55 actually talks about thirsting, not just for the water, not just for the milk, but also for the wine. And that's the currency. That means the greatest hindrance to coming into this new season is our old mentality and our old belief that we are not ready to change. Amen. Yesterday I told you about Peter. You know, Peter uh, is praying, and we'll come back, just stay there. Peter is praying, and, uh, you know, he falls into a trance, and the Lord is speaking to him and telling him, eat, and he says, Lord, I cannot eat. That means many of us can keep hearing from the Lord, but we may not necessarily obey what the Lord is saying. So the problem is not the new wine, but the structure, the wine skin, which is the mindset. The mindset. And we'll come to that maybe tomorrow or Saturday. For everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, there is no even money required. Come by and eat. What shall you come for? He says, yes. By wine and milk without money and without price. So the problem is not the scarcity of wine. The problem is, are we thirsty? No man, having taken the old wine, immediately desires the new, for he says the old is better. And God has been desiring to give us newness freshness, which mainly has to do with the word of the Lord, as you saw, the, the, the mountain shall drip with new wine, but we are not ready for it. We like to be in the old. We, we, are, we are like the Pharisees. I told you the Pharisees had one thing. They had, had two things. They had the old wine and the old wine skin. Those who are the Pharisees, they actually never changed. John is different. He has the new wine, but he stayed in the old wine skin. And therefore, he was destroyed. That's what the Bible says. If, all, if you put new wine into old wine skin, they will both be destroyed. And John was destroyed because he received the new wine. He says, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He says, he is, must increase, I must decrease. But yet, when he was in prison, he was offended. And Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended of me. And his head was cut. Why? Because the day he baptized him on Jordan, when the heavens opened and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, John should have closed his ministry then there and followed him. But he didn't. He stayed on his own. So he has a new wine, but he stayed in his old structure. That is why the disciples of John will come and ask him, 
Why do your disciples not fast like the way we do? Because even though that he had pointed them to Jesus, he himself never transitioned into the new thing. Yeah. And his assignment was to make the way. Behold, I send my messenger to make the way for the Lord. And there are many of us that come to a conference like this and you hear a new word, but you stay in your own mindset and that can never help you. In fact, it is going to destroy you. Lift up your hand and say, I want both the new wine and the new <laughs> and the wine skin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want both the wine. There are some adjustments that have to be made. Because though God, I have said this before, but let me say it. Though God is the same, God in essence is the same yesterday, today, and forever, God does not do the same thing the same way. Let me give you examples. The Bible says in Numbers, not Numbers, um, Exodus 17, let's, I hope that's where. Let me go the direction the Lord will help me, amen? As I learned how to preach, I used to read my notes a lot. As I've grown, now I can do without the notes. But you still have to get notes eh, so that you don't get confused. Like I can assure you, Laura was not going to preach from Joel 2. Yeah. Her notes are more than Joel 2. But that's the direction the Spirit took her, amen? So let's go to... to Exodus 17. And thank God for James. He taught me many things. By the way, let me tell you, one of the people God will use to adjust your wine skin is your husband. Some of you admire where? How many stretch? God has used him to stretch me. Because I will show you the problem with the old wine skin. Why, the prob why there is a problem with the old wine skin? It's because of its flexibility. And the fact that it cannot be, but let's not go ahead of ourselves. Let's go to Exodus chapter 17 and see something. I don't want to read all of it. Let's go to where they, they got water. Is it, it's verse what? Okay, it's verse what? Eh, simuni angalili kwani ya musomi Bible na mimi. Okay, from verse... One, actually, it's, it's this one. Eh? And all the congregation, let me just read it. And all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin. I want to show you the Lord is the same, but he doesn't do the same way. That is why we cannot stay in the word of yesterday, even though it's the same God that did it. I'll show you two instances. He said, according to the commandment of the Lord, and they camped in Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people contended with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why is it that you brought us out, out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock and, our th and, and, and thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod, which you shall strike the river and, you, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in the horeb, and you shall strike the rock. And water will come out of it, and that people may eat, may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So what does God instruct him? There is no water. And God says, Hit the rock. Now let's go to chapter 20, I think. Go to chapter 20. No, no. Numbers 20, sorry. Numbers 20. Let's go to maybe verse uh, 7. Let's go to verse 7. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, let's try this one. Take the rod. Maybe we can read from seven, five. Let's try five. So that you see they are in the same situation, but God will order him to do something different. And why have you made us to come out of Egypt, the same complaint, to bring us to this evil place? Can you imagine? The same place God promised them. They call it evil place. These were terrible people. God is so merciful that he spared them. In fact, that's why the Bible says Moses was the meekest man on the earth. Why? Because he pleaded for this evil people. They called manna worthless. They are calling the place they are going evil. 
Can you imagine? If I was God, I would have killed them. It is not, it is not a place of grain, but God is merciful. It was not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and they fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, he still says the same, it's the same situation, no water, you and your brother Aaron gather the congregation together, speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its waters. The rock will yield. You don't need to force it. Actually, this was an upgrade. And I can tell you, the new wine is coming to upgrade us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To upgrade us for the same situation, but we get an upgrade Amen. in the Lord. Oh, tell your neighbor, we are coming into an upgrade. I tell you. Yeah, yeah, where things will be automatic. Oh, yes, you know, it will be automatic. Because the first one, he has to use force. But this one, he will speak, and the rock itself will yield. And the Bible says, thus you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses took the rod before, from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. He's angry with the people. That's why as a leader, be careful. People can distract you from doing what the Lord has asked you to do. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? <laughs> He's also angry. Then, eh? So forgive your pastors. Then Moses lifted his hand and did what? He struck. He struck it. Twice, <laughs> not even once. <laughs> he just did, he forced it. In other words, he used human effort. Yet that was a method that God has given them from the beginning, but now he's using effort. Let me tell you, there are some things we continue to do in the church that are now illegal. And he struck it. And what came out? The water came abundantly. You know, let me tell you, it's, it, is, it does not matter whether the miracle is happening. God is more interested in the methodology of how you do it. Yeah. Because it doesn't mean when he struck the rock, the water didn't come out. In fact, in the first one, the Bible didn't say the water came out abundantly. In this one, the water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Verse 12, the Bible says, then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe in me. God was more interested in the principle. In obeying the proceeding, the now, the current. You see, new wine, when you look at that new wine, which is neos, uh, N-E-O in, in, in Greek, it means two things. One, it means the new wine as it relates to time. Okay, it's a fresh wine as it relates to time, but also quality of the wine. Go ahead and check it out. It's Neos, N-E-O-S. Relating to the time, meaning it is fresh wine, but also relating to quality of the wine. So it's not just the timing, the freshness, but the quality. So God is not just bringing in new things. God is upgrading us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is upgrading. It's called an upgrade. Amen. And we must upgrade. Amen. Let me show you another example. And, and this thing made Moses, the meekest man on the earth, one whom God spoke to face to face, not to enter into the promised land, even though the people drank their water. Let me tell you, because God still wants to feed his people, he'll feed his people, but you can lose it. And so miracles are no longer the standard by which we measure. Can I say that again? Yes. Miracles are not no longer the, the measure. Because God will care for his people anyhow. He will feed them even through a raven, which was an unclean animal. Even though God was angry with Elijah. By the way, God was very angry with him. Because he asked God to go before time. Before he finished his work. That is why he has to resurrect through John. Because he had, not, he had not finished his work. God will bless his people. 
So the point is not about the things that are happening. The wrong point is how we're doing it. God will heal his people. It doesn't matter. He will because he's their God. Let me show you another one. That one I may read or not. What about the brazen serpent? The brazen serpent. Let's go to it. The brazen serpent. Let me give the story, then we read the scripture. When the children of Israel murmured against God, God sent fiery serpents to bite them. It's God, not the devil. God sent fiery serpents to bite them. And then they cried to Moses, and Moses cried to God. And God told him, put up a brazen serpent so that whoever looks into it will be healed. It is God who said. Now, later, these this, this children of Israel worshipped the same thing. I will show you. And that is what happens. Let me tell you, we cannot worship a move of God because God will move to another thing. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah. We, we can't. We can't. We can't dwell there. Now look at it. So you remember that story. And God is the one who told him, raise up a brazen serpent. Whoever will look at it will be healed. But look at this one. Okay, let's first read this one. You got it. So Moses made a brazen serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, and we know this is a type of price. Jesus comes and talks about it. He lived. Verse 10. Now the children of Israel, whatever. Now let's go to 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, to show you what they did. We are saying new wine is not scarce. God does not do the same thing the same way, even though he's the same God. Now look at what they did to this uh, brazen serpent. He removed the high places, this is now King Hezekiah, and broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image, and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. Why did he break it down? For until those days, what did they do? The children of Israel did what? They burnt incense to who? Yeah, now it became an idol. So even though it was a move of God, it was no longer valid in those days. So we can't use what happened yesterday for today. That is why we must desire new. That is why that scripture that says in John, anybody who has tasted the old wine does not immediately desire the new because he says the old is better. So our problem is one, as I said, we desire the new wine, but we want to put it in an old structure like John, or we don't desire the new wine at all. We don't desire the new wine. Now, we'll still come back to the wine. Let me leave it and say this about the wine skin. Let me tell you a few things about the wine skin. The wine skin is very important. And so God wants to preserve both the wine. And I told you yesterday what is new wine. I told you the, what wine represents in the Bible. You can buy the CD. And also I told you what new wine represents. New wine represents new dimensions in God. New wine represents new revelation in God. New wine represents new seasons. In fact, the first miracle Jesus did, he turned water into wine, declaring this was the beginning of his miracles at the Cana of Galilee. It was new wine. Why? Because every time the Bible talks about a new wine, God is declaring a new season. New wine also uh, represents new levels in God, new levels of operation, new anointings, new graces. New anointing, new levels, new way. In fact, that thing of God telling Moses to speak to the rock was a new level. Because the rock itself didn't need to be hit, it was going to yield to his voice. So that was an upgrade. So new season will release new levels in him, new anointings, new graces, new dimensions of doing things. Look at David. You know, if you look, I love David. I've been studying David. You know, 
and as God was expanding his capacity, you know, because in his structure, at the beginning he borrowed bread. He had to go to the, to the temple, to the tabernacle to get bread from Abiyadah because his men were hungry and he didn't have anything. The second time he has to borrow bread from Nabo who refused to give him. <laughs> but when he, by the time he brought back the ark, he distributed bread to everyone. Yeah. Why? Because now he had grown to a place where he can be able to accommodate what God was doing. So this old, 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 you know, this wineskin, well, the reason why God wants us to renew the wineskin is because God is not short of the wine. Isn't he the same God? He says, behold, I'll do a new thing. Have, can't you see it? God says that. God says in Proverbs chapter 3 that our verse shall, shall, shall overflow with the new wine. Is it it God who says that? So God is not scarce of new wine. The problem I told you is two. One, we want new wine, but we have not changed the wine skin, or we don't desire the new wine at all. I pray in this season you desire the new wine. Now, the wine skin, the wine skin, wine skin gets weary or gets worn out. The wine skin can get weary, and the wine skin gets worn out. It gets worn out. Every wine skin, and I'll read you some scriptures to show that. Every wine skin gets weary and gets worn out. When you go to the book of Joshua, chapter 9, verse 1 to 14, and that's why we need to always have a new wine skin. That's why we must constantly, blessed is the man who is on a pilgrimage. Amen? Who is on a journey with God. Never settles. Okay? So, in the book of Joshua, I won't read it because of time, but you remember the story of the Gibeonites. Those Gibeonites <laughs> were, 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 were actually within the proximity of Joshua. But they realized, they saw what Joshua did to other nations, and they said, we'll trick him. And this is what the Bible says from verse, um, let's try six and see, because I don't want to read a, a long one. And they went to Joshua, to the camp at Gilgal, and said to him, to the men of Israel, we have come from a far country. They are cheating. You read the one before. Now, therefore, make a covenant with us. Verse 7. Then the men of Israel said to the Hivites, perhaps you dwell among us, so how can we make a covenant with you? And it's true, they were dwelling with them. But they said unto Joshua, we are your servants. And Joshua said to them, who are you and where do you come from? So they said to him, from a very far country, your servants have come because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard of his fame and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to see on king of Heshbon and all king of Bashan who was at Asha, or whatever it is. Therefore, our elders and all our inhabitants of our country spoke to us saying, Take provisions with you for the journey and go to meet them and say to them, we are your servants. Now, therefore, make a covenant with us. So this is how they proved. This is what I wanted to show you, that they had come from a long journey. Because an old wineskin represents a long journey. <laughs> Tell them a long journey. <laughs> okay? And the bread of ours we took hot from for our provision from our houses on the day we departed to come to you. But now look, it is dry and moldy. And this what? Wine skins, which we filled with new and see they are what? They are torn. Every wine skin, that's what I wanted to show you. You can read the story, but this is the point. Every wine skin gets worn out with the time. There is a wearing out of a wine skin. I mean, let's go back to Jesus. Many times the Bible records that he was weary. Even when he went to the Samaritan woman, he was weary. And that's why he was asking for a drink. And you know, life has a way of wearing you out. Life has a way of wearing me out. And if I continue to have the same wineskin, because as Pastor James said, you are the wineskin. Yourself, you are the wineskin. 
And this wineskin gets weary because of the long journey. The long journey. And when that wineskin gets weary, God cannot waste his one new wine because as soon as he puts it there, it's going to spill over. And not only that, God cares about you, it's going to destroy the wineskin. So God in his mercy withholds the new wine. So do you see what happened to these wineskins? They are torn. They are torn. So that's what I wanted to show you, that every wineskin, every wineskin, every wineskin gets torn, wears out through long journeys, through long experiences. No wonder I can tell you, in fact, ministers, you can hate ministry with time. And believers, you can hate church with time. Because unless you are renewed by God, that's why the Bible says he sends his spirit and he renews. Let me tell you, God is in the business of renewing. And how does God renew? God renews by his voice. Amen? Amen? God renews by his voice. That's why you must seek to hear the voice of the Lord. Because by that voice, you get renewed. Some of us just need a fresh word, even for everything else that we are doing. Forget about ministry. Even your business needs a new word. Need a fresh, need the breath of God. That's why it's the proceeding word from the Lord. All right. Now, the wine skin was made from the goat skin. All right. Wine skin was made from the goat skin. That's how the wine skin was made. In fact, I hope in one of the sessions, they, they are going to... They are going to show us, let me just now get to my notes so that I can keep to. So the wine skin was made from the goat skin. If you can show us that at a point, it was made from goat's hair, actually, from the goat's hair. And when it is fresh, it can easily be stretched. When it is old, it becomes stiff. Can I say that again? The wine skin was made from goat's hair or goat's skin. When it is fresh, it can be stretched. Because you know new wine, what is new wine? New wine is fresh wine that is still fermenting. That is what new wine is. Not like the old wine that are settled. New wine is fermenting. That means it can, it can expand. And if the container can, is not expandable, that is why the wine bursts. Because the container into which it has been put cannot accommodate it because it is going to expand. Do you understand now? So a new wine skin is the one that is able to accommodate the new wine, because it is expandable. And let me tell you, brethren, some of us have become so stiff, it even shows outwardly. I'm telling you, you will see it. You know, when we, <laughs> when we were young in faith, I don't know about you, but there was nothing that looked impossible. Everything pastor said, you believed it. You could be stretched out. But now after your wine skin has gone through experiences and you know that not every time you plant a seed you receive that, you know now, by now. <laughs> so the, the, the pastor can be shouting at the top of his voice, but you know, ah, uh ah. -uh. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You know more. Isn't it? You know more. You are stiff. You are very stiff. In fact, let me tell you, the enemies of a church are the ones who have been there for a long time. Those who have been there for a long time. You know, new believers or new members who come to your church and they'll be happy. Oh, I love the word. And this one is wondering, what? Why? Because they are stiff. They have not learned to adjust their wine skin. Somebody really laughing on that. 
You know, I was teaching in our church and I told them, I told them, I was teaching about becoming mighty and I told them, you must become mighty in scriptures. And I was teaching them how to become mighty in scripture. It's one through hearing. And I told them, you cannot hear without a preacher. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 10. How can they hear unless there is a preacher? That means the most important person in your life is a preacher. There's a preacher. Because faith comes by hearing. Faith does not come by reading. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But the Bible says, how can they hear unless there is a preacher? That means the preacher is the most important person in your life as far as God is concerned. Now, the problem is, we become so familiar with a preacher that we, our ears become dull and we can never hear the word. And that is stiffness. We are so stiff. The kawain's skin kame kauka. Na wacha niwambie dada zangu na dugu zangu. Ime kauka mpaka inaonekana. Outside. Let me, that's why the Bible says this in the Isaiah chapter 66 and also Psalms 51. On this one, on this one, one who has a broken spirit and a contrite heart. In other words, one who is not thief. Hmm. Let that one sink. Me, I know. I know for myself. God wants to take me to new levels, new territories. But God has had to keep adjusting me in many ways. Otherwise, 10 years ago, I was not the same. Now I know. I know even how to deal with people and deal with dignitaries. But at the beginning, I could say, I don't care. I have the anointing. Where? You have to know how to treat dignitaries. Isn't it? Now, I say it, and I think you can write it again. God is interested in both the wineskin and the wine itself. Both the wineskin and the wine itself. Both the wineskin and also the wine itself. That is why, as Pastor James said also this morning, it is your responsibility. It's God's responsibility to bring the new wine but it is your responsibility to prepare the wine skin or the bottle into which that wine shall be poured into. That is why God, in his own mercy, we will always take you through a journey to develop three things in your life. Three things. One, your mental Capacity, Because we said yesterday, mind, the mind is a wine skin. And we look at it, the mind. That's why the Bible keeps saying, I think three times, the Bible says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The Bible says we be, we, be, we be transformed by renewing of the mind. Because the mind is a wine skin. So God would like to adjust your wine skin, to adjust your capacity through your mental, expanding your mental capacity. Especially when it comes to mental, your attitude. Your attitude. Because there are some places God will not take you until he has changed your mind. He will build your mental capacity, your physical capacity, your physical capacity. It takes a, a certain mindset for you to be able to have physical capacity. You know, you need physical capacity, and God will make it. I tell you, I mean, unless it was the Lord, let me just use this example in humility. Unless it was the Lord, I don't think we, as Fountain Gate Church, would have agreed to move from paying a rent, which now you are going to pay 10 times. It was 10 times, 10, within a twinkling of an eye like this. But that's physical expansion. 
For us to be able to host this meeting, God had to stretch the wine skin has to expand. You see, some of us need to even change the leadership structure so that God can do the new thing. Because as long as it's the old one, let me give you an example. Look at Moses. Moses came from East, uh, Egypt with a few people. They were just a few in number, so to say. And he used to judge them alone. Tell your neighbor, alone. alone. <laughs> Not alone. I said alone. alone. He used to judge them alone. Now what happened when his father came? His father Jethro who was his spiritual father. Because I want to tell you something. New wine. New wine. The price she's talking about. New wine comes from a spiritual father. You will see it. The blessing of a father. That is why Isaac blessed Jacob with a new wine. And it took Jethro to help Moses to adjust the structure. Otherwise, his wine skin, in fact, he said, when he observed what he was doing every day, he said, they will wear you out. Because every simple and big matter was brought to this person. And Moses had to adjust the wine skin from his father. There are places, there are realms we cannot go, even as women of grace, without adjusting our structure. Let me give you another example. God told them, because he knew, you know, as soon as they came to the end of their journey, before they entered, they crossed Jordan, God knew. He told them already, the land you are going into is not like Egypt. Where you watered, you sowed your seed with your foot and you watered with what? What did you sow with? Huh? Can you imagine? But I said, but the land you are coming into <laughs> is a land of hills and valley, get us that verse, that drinks water from heaven. So you cannot have the mentality of Egypt and be able to enter the promised land. That is why before they cross, he has to circumcise them. So that they can leave their old ways to be able to accommodate the new. Give us that verse. Quickly. Now who is doing it? Okay. That is prophet preach like that. They keep going. Yeah, look at this one. He says, well, let's read from 8 and now I'll be closing. Then we are still just laying the foundation. I think I'll also talk more. Of, you, you will talk about more of wine. Me and James can do the wine skin. Because I know, and you know, adjusting the wine skin is painful. And that's why many are saying, I know what God is saying, that's the new wine, but I am not ready. Because changing the wine skin means losing. And let me tell you, there is no wine skin that is made without death. There has to be an animal that dies for a new skin to be availed. That is why it is so difficult. So people know the wine is good, but I'd rather stay in my old wines. Therefore, you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess. And that you may prolong your days where? In the land which the Lord swore to give your fathers to them and their descendants, a land flowing with what? With milk and honey. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt. You know, that's why they kept remembering Egypt. Oh, the pumpkins. Oh, the watermelons. Oh, the pomegranates. Oh, that was their mind. Oh, in fact, if we were there, oh, take us back. They their mindset. Well, how did you do that? You sowed your seed and watered it by foot. That's how small their land was. You know, a land that you can only plant. You know, it's like, uh, you know, the way my mother taught me how to plant. Eh? By the way, I was a good planter. But we would only do a small piece because to Nayaka too. But the land, and it was a vegetable garden. Tell, tell your neighbor, my friend, we are moving from vegetable. That's why we cannot keep on dealing with small issues. We got to finish all the small issues, those domestic differences, we got to deal with them. You can't keep going back to the vegetable garden. 
where we are dealing with the vegetable. In fact, that vegetable garden represents domestic issues. Kitchen garden. How shall we go? Women of grace. God is calling nations. Nations. Nations are calling us. Nations. Right now, Zambia is calling. Malawi is calling. Natunaweza tuzungukana hapa. Nani alisalimiwa? Nani akusalimiwa? Nani alipewa? Nani alinana? We can go nowhere. Because there we can only sow the seed with our foot and water it there. My friend, we need now to water with bulldozers. Tell your neighbor, leave domestic issues. Watch us here, son, dogo, dogo. Bye, I'm bye. Sinikweli. Yeah, yeah. Look, it is what land? But the land, tell your neighbor the land. Which, the, which you will do what? Cross over to. To do what? To possess is a land of hills and valleys which drinks water from the rain upgrade. In other words, supernatural. Yes. That is the upgrade we are talking about. We are upgrading. Yes. Automatic. The hills shall drip automatic. Yes. In other words, God is talking about an acceleration. It's a land where our effort, our human effort, will cease to be, and God will take us into realms and levels of new things. I want that. Oh, yes, I want that. I want that. But we must change our structure to be able to accommodate that so that it comes a time when I have, not me, I'm just giving an example, but let me give you an example with myself. I have six personal assistants, and they are not fighting among themselves. Who is loved? And who is not? That's domestic. <laughs> who came? Who, 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 what? As long as our mindset is like that, we are going nowhere. Yeah. Because the land we are going into, it drinks water from where? Because it is a land of valleys and hills. Do you get it now? And that is why God told them, and I will close now. He told them, though I still have a few minutes. He told them, when they go to that land, he shall not make them to possess it at a go. Why did God say, do you think God was able to remove the beasts? He was. But he said, I will not. Give us that verse. I will not. I will wait until you increase. Lest you be swallowed by... In other words, he was saying, I will adjust this structure until it is able to accommodate. Tell your neighbor, stop being stiff. Yeah, yeah. Flexi, kidogo. Easy, easy. Easy. Otherwise, God is not going to give us new wine. We can keep praying, cash us, revive us. But as long as the church is babyish and childish, fighting for members, I mean, who moved where, who went where, then we are not ready. But the land we are going into is a land that will receive supernatural provision from the Lord, the new wine. Amen? Amen. So tell your neighbor, stop simple, petty politics. Tell your neighbor, be ready that God can do anything at any time. <laughs> any time he can do it. Tell your neighbor, the only limitation is the wineskin. So are you ready to adjust your wineskin? Amen. Let's stand up and pray so that we'll continue with the wineskin. I love the wineskin. I love it. I love the wineskin. I love the ones. Lift up those hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Isaiah says in that Isaiah 43, Behold, I do a new thing. Let's go to there as we pray on that point. Behold, I do a new thing. Shall you not see it? Shall you not perceive it? He says, but 
he was telling Jacob or Israel, you have not. He says, behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Look at what he says. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. And he says this, the people I have done what? That's the point. The people I have not created. Jacob I created. Israel I did what? I formed. The people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. Verse 23. But, tell your neighbor there is a but. God wants to do a new thing. But, what does he say? But you, <laughs> you have not called upon me who? Oh, Jacob. Why? Because God wants Jacob to call upon him so that he can adjust him into Israel. There is no one that God brought into a new season without changing their name. Abraham to Abraham. Sarah, Sarai to Sarah. Jacob to Israel. Paul, Saul to Paul. Simon to Peter. And you have been, what? So I told you the wineskin. After the wineskin has been there for a long time, it is weary. So that's where the problem is. Jacob is not calling on God who wants to do a new thing. For one reason, his wine skin is not in a position. But you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought, and I will show you if we get time, that one of the ways to release a new season in your life, the Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance. And it says, you have not but you have not brought me the sheep for your burnt offerings, nor have you honored me with your sacrifice. I have not caused you to serve with grain offering, nor have I wearied you with incense. But God is ready to do a new thing, but we have not called upon him. Lift up your hand and say, God, I wanted this thing, this wineskin of mine, Lord. Oh, sometimes I'm so tired. Father, I pray, renew my life. Oh God, send a spirit of renewal in this conference, our Father. Renew vision, oh God. Some of us that have lost the vision, some of us that have lost the joy, some of us that have lost everything, and we feel like we have come to the end, Lord. Let this be a conference where our wine skin is adjusted and made so that we can be able to receive this new thing that God is doing. I shall not die. Oh, I shall not die. Declare I will not die. Oh, Lord, send, send, send your revival upon me, Lord. Send your revival. I call upon you, Father. I call upon you for newness. Oh, God Almighty, adjust me, Lord. Change my mindset. Change my belief system. Change my attitude, dear Lord Jesus. Change me, God Almighty. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we specifically pray in this conference, there shall be such adjustments. Oh, Lord, we allow you to touch us like the way you touched Jacob. Oh, and adjusted his life. And from thence he became the father of nations. And he became Israel. And through him you have blessed us, Lord. He was able to connect to the blessing of his father just after you touched him. Lord, we pray, touch us. Touch our minds. Lord, some of us are so stiff. Oh, God, we cannot be stretched, dear Lord, because of the things we have passed through. Lord, I pray through this conference, our wine skins, our minds, our hearts will be, will be, will be adjusted. Will be adjusted will be adjusted. I pray for myself. Pray for yourself too. Father, I pray. I know you are not yet done with me. Oh Lord, I pray in this conference, Father, you make me see into the future. You make me see into the eternity that I shall not be derailed by my current circumstances that seems to dictate otherwise our God, but I'll see the future. I will see far, dear Lord. Rekabaka shekata. Ye rabandebo sheraba. And Lord, you are going to adjust me. Change me, Lord. That I may go into the nations. That I may go into the harvest. That I may go 
enter into this harvest of the last days, dear Father. Therefore, God, adjust my wine skin, my mentality, my heart, my relationships. My relationships. Yeah, I leave some relationships. I leave them. I leave them, Lord. I leave them. I adjust even my friends. I will adjust them. Oh, God, I adjust them. Our Father and our God. Thank you, Lord. If this conference is not for you, at least it's for me. It's for me. There are many prophetic words. This, this two weeks I read, I read my prophetic words. I like to read them. And a number of them are not yet fulfilled. And I know it's not because God didn't speak. It's just because of the one skin. So I pray in this conference, do the ministering of his servants. Somehow God will adjust my wine skin so that you can be, be able to, to actualize the things that God spoke to me. Amen. What